foreign policy at the turn of the century was characterized by three vastly different philosophies. Theodore Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy, William Taft's dollar diplomacy, and Woodrow Wilson's moral diplomacy. Theodore Roosevelt abided by the African proverb, speak softly and carry a big stick. He applied this big stick theory to American foreign policy, believing the U.S. should take a strong role in Asia. In 1905, Roosevelt intervened to end the war between Russia and Japan over Korea and Manchuria. When Japan was angered by racist sentiment in the U.S., Roosevelt arranged a gentleman's agreement. He would see that Asian discrimination ended, but in turn, Japan would have to limit Japanese immigration to the U.S. In a show of growing U.S. naval might, Roosevelt launched 16 warships on a world tour. Painted brilliant white, the flotilla was known as the Great White Fleet. The tour was a triumph. The U.S. was regarded as the most potent naval power after the British. In the interest of connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, Roosevelt turned his attention to a narrow strip of land in Colombia, the Isthmus of Panama. In 1903, Roosevelt's Secretary of State John Hay failed in an attempt to negotiate a treaty with Colombia for the land. But U.S. interests were not to be denied. Roosevelt backed a Panamanian revolt and negotiated for the Panama Canal Zone. Work began. Massive locks were designed to raise ships through the mountains and then lower them on the other side. 1.53 million cubic meters of concrete were poured. 70,000 workers recruited and $400 million was spent. A marvelous engineering achievement, the canal was finally completed in 1914, just in time for World War I. In 1904, Roosevelt wielded his big stick again, adding a corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. Initiated in 1823, the Monroe Doctrine established a policy to limit European expansion into the Western Hemisphere. Roosevelt's corollary went further. It stated that the U.S. had the right to intervene militarily to keep European powers out of the Western Hemisphere. The Roosevelt corollary was exercised the very next year in 1905 in order to relieve the Dominican Republic's debt to threatening foreign creditors. In 1909, when William Howard Taft succeeded Roosevelt as president, he established a foreign policy encouraging U.S. investment in Latin America and China as a way of discouraging European investment. In contrast to Roosevelt's big stick policy, this new policy became known as dollar diplomacy. As a result, U.S.-owned businesses came to dominate the economies of many small nations in Central America, the Caribbean, and parts of South America. Latin Americans reacted with anger and resentment, but they were powerless in the face of the U.S. military. In 1913, Woodrow Wilson succeeded Taft as president. Wilson offered yet another approach to foreign policy. He rejected big stick and dollar diplomacy in favor of a moral diplomacy, applying a moral standard and not recognizing any government that is undemocratic or hostile to U.S. interests. To protect U.S. business interests, Wilson rallied troops to stabilize Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba, effectively turning them into U.S. protectorates. Wilson encountered failure in his dealings with Mexico. In the late 19th century, corruption in Mexico was prevalent, escalating with the assassination of Mexico's president, Francisco Madero, in 1913 and the assumption of power by Victoriano Huerta. Not wanting to support a government by murder, Wilson refused to dignify Huerta's government. I am going to teach the South American republics to elect good men. President Wilson mobilized U.S. Marines to capture the port of Veracruz in Mexico. Although split over allegiance to Huerta, Mexicans were united in their opposition to U.S. invasion and war was barely averted between the two countries. In 1916, when Mexican rebel Pancho Villa raided a U.S. border town and killed U.S. citizens, an expeditionary force of 11,000 men under the leadership of General John J. Pershing crossed into Mexico to hunt for Villa. 
After a year-long pursuit, Pershing's expedition was called off, but the affair increased anti-American sentiments. U.S. troops withdrew in 1917, and tensions eventually eased between Mexico and the U.S. The United States forcibly entered the new century as an imperial power. In little more than a century, a nation founded on freedom discovered itself embroiled in troubling relationships with the peoples of its new territories and protectorates. Despite the turmoil, America had forged from its historic isolation a newborn world power.